Hey, you there. Yeah, you. Yeah, the one with kale hanging out of your mouth. It's episode four, Why Diets Fail. Quit scrolling your feed, because we're about to get into it. So in the first three episodes, we talked about one, the overall self-defense system, two, the first prong, which is slowing your metabolic rate during dieting to prevent you from starving because your body treats dieting like controlled famine. In the third episode, we talked about the second prong of your body's self-defense system, which is the restoration prong, driving you to overeat and be able to more efficiently store fat and fat cells when you're finished with the diet. In episode four today, we're going to talk about the prevention phase. Now, prevention might sound like a good thing. But when I talk about prevention, what I'm talking about is your body's diet memory. After you've dieted multiple times and your body has experienced that famine, it is going to attempt to prevent you from losing weight in the future. Because if you're telling your body food is scarce, it is going to take steps to make sure that once you've restored your energy reserves, that it becomes harder to deplete them in the future. How does it do this? Well, one, you have a very unique hormonal milieu after you've been on a diet for a while. So when you've had an energy gap, you've been decreasing calories, you've been decreasing body fat, insulin is low, leptin is low, you have decreased sympathetic nervous system tone, you also have decreased thyroid hormone, and you have decreased fat oxidation in the adipose tissue. All of these things come together to make something very unique possible. That is, at the end of a diet, when you have all of these unique things happening, if you overfeed calories rapidly enough, there is evidence that you can actually create new fat cells. Now, typically, the only way you can increase the number of fat cells in your body is if you become so obese that you can literally not stuff any more triglyceride into the fat cells. So most fat cells have a maximum capacity of what we believe to be around 100 microns. And once you start to exceed that, the body has to make new cells in order to store more energy. However, at the end of a diet, if you overfeed rapidly enough, again, because of this unique hormonal milieu, it looks like you may actually be able to increase your fat cell number. Let's break this down a little bit further. All right, so this is the synopsis of a study by a researcher named uh, McLean. And they took rats, now again, rats, but there's no way I can think of that you could have done this study in a human because they had to kill them at the end, and they don't usually like that when you do that with humans. They took them, these rats, and they dieted them down to a, low, a relatively low body fat. They lost about 20% of their body weight, and then they had them basically, they gave them as much food as they wanted. They could, they could eat however much they wanted, and they rapidly uh, regained the weight. What was very interesting is not when they got their fat cells really big, but when their fat cells were still small here, they noticed a population of pre-adipocytes, which, which are nascent uh, preformed adipocytes that are not fully formed, start to differentiate into fully formed adipocytes, so fully formed fat cells. And they saw almost a 50% increase in the total number of fat cells. Why does this happen? If you think about this from the perspective of your body trying to save you from a future famine, if you started putting in energy so quickly that your body risked not being able to capture it all, it may differentiate these fat cells to make sure, to make absolute certainty, they can capture all this energy. And what you also see is that that unique 
hormonal milieu uh, really predisposes you to this sort of thing happening. So for example, people think that fat cells just kind of sit there. You, you, they don't really turn over, they just kind of sit there and they soak up excess energy or they give away energy depending on the calorie balance. But that's not true. We now know that fat cells have a life cycle. Your body is always creating and destroying fat cells. It's just that it's very tightly regulated so that the number typically stays the same. Well, T3 helps prevent differentiation of preadipocytes into adipocytes. But at the end of a diet, your T3 is low, as well as leptin and insulin. So this very unique hormonal milieu, in conjunction with low sympathetic nervous system tone, seems to create the perfect storm for possibly increasing your fat cell number if you regain weight too rapidly. That is, in this particular phase, it appears that the flux across the adipocyte, the flux of nutrients going into the fat cell, when rapid enough, can trigger this response. In this post-diet state, where you're not able to dissipate energy well, and you're capturing almost all of it. What was interesting about this study is if we look at how big the fat cells were, uh, they were about 100 microns when they started. They died them down to about 85. And then during early relapse, they actually stayed the same. The number increased by about 50%. When they got to the end, they did not stop regaining uh, fat until each individual fat cell was approximately 100 microns again. Only now, they had more total fat cells, so their overall body fat mass was bigger. So I'll say it again. Because set point, body fat set point, we believe is controlled by the size and sensed by the size of the individual adipocyte. If you create new fat cells, each individual cell will be smaller at the same previous body fat mass. Thus, it stands to reason that your body would continue to gain body fat until they reached their original size, their pre-diet size. This is why it is so important to diet correctly. It is so important not to yo-yo diet, not to fad diet, not to crash diet. Because this rapid overfeeding that's triggered by those, by restricting yourself so much, this can be a major problem. And in my opinion, may contribute to a lot of the literature we see on body fat overshooting and weight regain. Now I'm not saying if you've ever regained body fat that you had this happen. In fact, this probably happens in very rare cases. And in my next video, I'm gonna talk about how to make sure that this stuff doesn't happen to you. But basically, when you get to the end of a diet or you're reaching the end of your caloric restriction, you need to take very seriously how you come out of that restriction. Because if you do it wrong, you'll not only go back to where you were, you'll end up worse off than before. This is the third prong of your body's self-defense system. That system is powerful, saturated with redundancies, and its sole focus is to restore your depleted energy reserves. If you don't take this into account and you diet incorrectly, it will fuck you up. And I have seen this many times over with many clients I've worked with. Not necessarily this, but people who cannot lose weight unless they go super low calorie because they have just obliterated their metabolism from years and years of improper fad and yo-yo dieting. I had many people message me, comment on my videos and say that they feel like the video series has been speaking to them and what do they do? They feel hopeless. Well, there is hope. I'm gonna talk about it in my next video. But the first thing you've got to do is get yourself out of this mindset that you have to lose this weight now. This is a long-term battle. And if you keep focusing on the five pounds that you have to lose, that you've been trying to lose for the past five years, and keep losing and regaining, and keep losing and regaining, if you keep focusing on that and don't focus on the long-term, you will be doomed to continue to fail. All right, guys, I hope this video has been helpful. If you like it, click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll catch you next week with better news.